Cy the Photo Guy. Is he a cool dude? Is he a sick fuck? You're going to find out on today's episode of the Cinema 9 Podcast. That's right. It's one hour photo. Eric Branchum chose this movie. He's a sick, sick man. He's got issues. Or maybe he's just a Mark Romanek fan. I don't know. Either way, we're here live, uncensored. Myself, Eric, Travis Roy. This is the Cinema 9 Podcast. Cinema 9 Pod, ProtonMail.com. Travis Roy, Hazel Park, Michigan. Bowling is fun. Yeah, it turns out, you know, it's uh, it's a an, uh, an activity that I enjoy. I've been doing it, you know, I've done it twice in this decade, and uh, I liked it both wow. times. So I'll do it again. I'll do it again. A third time. Yeah. Yeah. And I got I got big news for you. I want you guys to know, like, the level of my commitment to the show. I, I, I made a big sacrifice today. Big sacrifice. It might not sound like much to you guys, but when I could have bought my ticket for the Thursday night showing of Black Widow... I bought the Friday night showing tonight so that it you know, wouldn't interrupt the, interrupt the show, which I really struggled. I got to admit, I was like, like could they, would they bump it back to 10? But I knew you wouldn't. So, <laughs> so I'm very excited, though, to have finally, after all of this time, purchased my Black Widow ticket where I will see this fucking movie in a movie theater in America in the year of our Lord, 2021. Has there been greater anticipation for a film? <laughs> I don't know if there's been a longer wait other than maybe the new Bond movie. <laughs> well, uh, I'm glad you chose to do that because there's a once in a lifetime event tonight. You know, some Tiger's making his debut, so I definitely got to I can't miss that. That only happens once, but you can still right. see the All movie right. tomorrow. Yeah. So it's a big deal. It's a big deal. I think it worked out for the best. Either way, we could have done the show anytime we want. We run the show. It's our show, so we make the rules, which yeah. is good. We I, I like to stick to a schedule, don't you, Eric? You're you're a regulated guy. Yeah, definitely. I'm very anxious right now about timing. So uh, I'm really glad we got started. Uh, I'm excited. I, you can't see it, but like I've, I've pacified this baby. Like I've got like it's like like some sort of device where I would manage to like hold up the bottle so I don't have to hold it. And then like all this stuff, I'm just going to like keep my eye on her and make sure like nothing goes wrong. But I, I propped up everything in such a way where I probably won't have to be too, uh, too, uh, you know, yeah. messed up too much. But uh, don't I'm elaborate. Great. Don't, Dude, don't like, elaborate. I, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I stopped keto and like a couple days ago. And like uh -huh. ever since I stopped keto, I've been losing weight and feeling fantastic. I'm back to normal <laughs> diet. This is fucking awesome. All right. That's great. <laughs> so dumb. Hey, we've all been there, my friend, every day. Yeah. But I'll tell you yeah. this. Uh, we got to say farewell, Ned Beatty. He bit the big one. We do. Farewell, Ned Beatty, a legendary yeah. character yeah. actor. He didn't sure. really star much. He was pretty much, a, I would say he's almost like the quintessential character actor. I don't even know if I'm using that word properly, but uh, he is, right? Like, he's like the guy. I mean, I can't think of anyone. I mean, can you think of a single time he, he was the star? No. No. I don't think so. I never actually saw Deliverance, though. Oh, okay. One of the guys, right? Yeah, he, I mean, he's like yeah. one, he's one of the main characters, absolutely, and he's great in it. But uh, you, you should watch that. It, it actually is genuinely a really good Fucking movie. Fantastic! I think yeah. you watched it, it. I think you mentioned it on the show once here since we started doing this and said how good it was. Or I'm making that up in my head. Or it was a different conversation from a different life. Who knows? It, it's it, one of those. It, include, <laughs> it includes, in my opinion, the funniest Ned Beatty moment in his career. Like right after he's been assaulted and victimized by the uh, Alapiage, Alap, uh, Appalachian folks, like. He's getting away, but like he's not really trying that hard to get away from him. It's really funny. Next time you watch it, he's like, "Oh no, I just slipped." Uh oh, guys, don't come after me again. <laughs> come on, Ned. As, uh, my people are Appalachian, and and the film is shot in Georgia, which is not really not really Appalachia. Let's we, we can call them rednecks, we can call them hillbillies. But oh, I didn't know we were supposed to. Oh, I thought that <laughs> was the proper term. I'm <laughs> it, so fucked no, with these. No, it is. But it's, but no, what do movies, I call them? The movie's shot in Georgia. It takes place in Georgia. It's not, uh, it's not Appalachia. So leave my people out of it is back, what I'm saying. Back, can I call <laughs> Although the Appalachian Trail goes Georgia. down to Georgia. Oh, it does go down to Georgia. That's where you start it. That's so, true. That is true. It goes from Georgia to, to Maine. Yeah. Georgia to if Maine. you do the whole trail, it takes six wow. months to walk it, roughly, apparently. Is there, a, is there a Nick Nolte and Robert Redford film that we can I could have, <laughs> I could discover that on? I should have maybe learned that from there. Never mind. Carry on. Appalachians is adequate. <laughs> hey! At any rate, Ned Beatty. West Virginians. Yes. Go ahead. Well, I understand your point was true, but Ned Beatty's funniest moment is always to me in Network when he <laughs> he speaks to Howard as this all knowing okay. asshole and commands him that the fucking forces of the world are commanding you. 
That's so funny. He knows Always exactly how to play this guy. You know, you know, he knows exactly what to say to this fucking guy. He yeah. Just, you know, like, just <laughs> doesn't like do much. Just like, like brings the curtains down in front of him. Like, is that like just, <laughs> just very just, dramatic cinematic very for him? Right. So he knows. Yeah. He, he gives you the sense of this guy because he likes he's like the master CEO of the conglomerate of the world that Ned Beatty is in network. And he knows how to talk to every <laughs> single person, whether it's super intense from the gods or just, you know, man to man or man to woman or whatever it is. So that was always yeah. that one always made me chuckle. Yeah, I mean, uh, the bumbling sidekick and the Superman films is Dumb. hilarious. He's fun. Yeah, it's hilarious. I got, I'm not pissed at it. You're right. It's just well, the guy had. Uh, you could now offer a lot of variety. He kind of, and I hate to say it, this might be a bold statement, but he kind of reminded me of Philip Seymour Hoffman back in the day because he could be fucking really dramatic as hell, but also like really silly and funny and goofy and hmm. supporting role. Yeah, I mean, he even has a role kind of like, uh, you know, like PSH and um, talented Mr. Ripley. You got Ed, you got Ned Beatty in uh, Silver Streak, right? Which is kind of a similar role almost as Freddie. <laughs> kind of that hot shot, like I'm out, for, I'm out to get laid kind of guy. But for me, you know, uh, one of his final roles, his performance is Lotso in Toy Story Three. It was fucking fantastic, man. So good, so good. Uh, Lotso is a real uh, a character I empathize with. I think he's one of the best villains from like <laughs> the two thousands. <laughs> he's great. Yeah, animated Cap, or uh, not, Ned Beatty was in the original Captain America of 1990. By the way, too. Oh, was he? Wow, Dude, I'm a fan. He played Nashville? Sam Colowitz, whoever that is. Uh, I don't, I don't, that doesn't sound like Marvel canon to me, but maybe. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm yeah. not an expert. <laughs> also, uh, you know, he guest starred on Roseanne. Interesting. He could go, he'd be all over the place back in the 90s before Roseanne got canceled later when it became the Connors. Yeah. Uh, the last time I saw, I actually watched a Ned Beatty movie a couple weeks ago or a month ago when I watched a movie called The Big Easy, and he was in that. And that was classic Ned Beatty. Good stuff. Plays a police captain retiring, yeah. you know, the drill. Yeah, he was retired when when he passed. He hadn't made a film, I think, think since 2013 or something. Oh, but wow. uh, That's absolutely correct, by the way, 2013. And, but the most recent film I saw from him that I've watched the most is Charlie Wilson's War. He plays Doc Long, the senator that they have to convince to get more money to over there in Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah he was a good one. He'll be missed. I think he's, one, I think he's like one of the... Uh, one of the most recognizable faces from the 20th century in film, honestly. I don't think there's any doubt about that. It's a massive, massive IMDb listing. It goes on from all the way back to 1972 until 2013. So that's a hell of a run. Good for you. Rest yeah. in power, Ned Beatty. You're a good American. Is he American? I don't uh, know, but we salute you, sir. <laughs> is he Canadian? He could be Canadian. Though. He's a human being, and we love you. Real Ned, wherever you are. human being. <laughs> Little drive soundtrack. That's right. Well, we're going to get to one hour photo and find out who's depressed and who's not. But first, we got to do our quarantine <laughs> viewing picks. And, uh, wait, oh, wait, 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 real quick. Now, we tell you guys, oh boy. You always give us a five star rating on Apple Podcasts. That's always wonderful. We actually like that. We don't want you to send us emails, but we do like the five star <laughs> ratings, right? Does that get I mean, that right? we definitely, the five star ratings, you know, we don't like the to beg but you know we don't have a patreon thing we don't have like hidden content that we're keeping from you if you want to support the show in any way we ask once per episode if you would take a little moment out of your day you don't even have to write a review but it'd be nice if you did give us five star rating just because it helps us build an audience so thank you well said travis no email so you guys got off light this week let's go to travis on the quarantine viewing pig all right i watched a, a lot of movies this week i had a pretty good week uh, I caught the second half of the In Search of Darkness uh, documentary that Sh that Shutter did. It, it it was it wasn't quite as good as the, as the first one, but it did have Robert England and like Tom Todd, Todd was it Tom Savini Todd Savini I'm blanking all of a sudden. Is it Tom 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 yeah. Savini Tom Savini. You know, so it has a couple of like odd, like people that were kind of missing Nancy Allen um, from the first one, and it turned me on to Alone in the Dark from 1982 with. Uh, Oh shit! Uh, Donald Pleasance and Walter Ma no, not Walter Matho. I'm blanking on his. I'm not good with names all of a sudden tonight. Too much weird. Um, <laughs> Ed Wood, the uh, Martin Martin Landau. So you got oh. Martin Landau like as a as a slasher uh, it, with a Jack P Palance as a slasher like in 1982, really <laughs> like a home invasion movie. Basically, it was pretty. It was not as good as I wanted it to be. Not as good as it sounds. It, it was. It was worth seeing though. Uh, it also turned me on to Terror Train from 1980, which was pretty fucking awesome, uh, with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, another yeah. really early early slasher. I I like that one yeah. quite a bit actually. Uh, I watched The Vigil from 2019. 
How was it? Yeah, you know, um, th there's a, both that and Terror Train reminded me of how like trauma is like horror is such a great genre for dealing with trauma, like like PTSD and that kind of stuff. And and also it was really interesting to, to watch. I mean, there's so many fucking movies about like Christian demonology and all that stuff. So it was really cool to have like a Jewish perspective. Um, and it was creepy as fuck. I would definitely recommend the vigil. It all takes place. Uh, you know, the overnight vigil, uh, I forget what you call it, Seder. I forget, no, no, I'm not sure. It starts with an S anyways. Um, the but, Jewish uh, Seder? That's what that is. If they, when you, like when someone died and you spend like the night. Oh, Shiva, Shiva. Shiva, thank you. Um, so, so it was pretty fucking creepy. I like that one and would strongly recommend that one. Creepy as this guy? Not quite as creepy. Well, actually, yes, creepier than Cy Parrish. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I caught the amusement park, which was the long lost George oh, Romero. Wow. Did you watch this, Eric? Where, where, where did you watch it? It's on Shutter. Okay. Uh, it's, a, right. it's an hour long. If you guys aren't familiar, yeah. this is a film that the Lutheran, like whatever the fuck organization of America, uh, asked him to make like really early in his career, and then it got shelved. And it's all about like the mistreatment of the elderly. And it's it was interesting to watch. I mean, I wouldn't say go out of your way to watch it, but it's you know if you're a fan, check it out. Uh, I continued my Cronenberg education with Dead Ringers, and I got to tell you, I really wasn't that into it. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I mean, like, it, it took some twists and turns, but, like, I just hated spending time with the Mantle Twins. I just hated <laughs> these people so much. There was, no, there was like, completely non-redemptive characters. Um, but, you know, I can, but, you know, it's it's, it's Cronenberg, so it's good. Um, Shadow of the Cloud. By Howard Shore. Sorry, my bad. No, go ahead. I actually really fucking but, hated that but, Howard Shore score. I hated it so much. Oh, I loved it so much. One of my favorite Howard Shore scores. <laughs> wow, that's it. so weird. <laughs> so grossly inappropriate to me. I'm like, it's so weird. It's misplaced. I feel like I'm watching Mrs. Doubtfire. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shadow in the Cloud from 2020. People are yeah. shitting on this movie. It's getting yeah. terrible reviews. I think we got a cult classic in the making. I strongly recommend for a certain subset of people. If you like, I mean, we've talked on this show about like submarines and like, um, like you know, setting films in places like you know, single location places that are highly dangerous. Half this movie takes place in the um, the turret, like the under turret of a World War II plane that is falling fucking apart. That is intense, and it's a creature feature, and it, it's there's some heavy alien vibes. Um, I mean, and it's bonkers. Like it, it takes itself kind of seriously, but at the same time, it is so like, uh, like late night movie, like creature feature, like we, like just boldly, like we, we're, we're going to abandon the laws of physics. We don't give a fuck. Uh, and it's and it's just a really fun watch, and I really, really enjoyed Shadow in the Cloud. I could see why some people hated it. I don't, you know, again, half a movie in a cockpit or like a, a turret. That's not for everyone, but I thought it was pretty awesome. Uh -huh. Um. Cage of Files, I got one for you. Quick aside to the Cage of Files. Uh, <laughs> uh, Between Worlds from 2018 is one of those movies that is not a good movie that I would recommend to anyone else. But if you are a Nick Cage fan, uh, you got him banging like three different women through the movie. Uh, lots of slow motion shots of him like getting sprayed with water like outside with sunglasses <laughs> on. Um, it's just like a completely fucking dopey movie. Um, where he really gets to just you know be Nick Cage, so it's definitely like in the the that special between between genres of like not exactly a good movie, but a great Nick Cage movie in its own way. I uh, oh. wouldn't recommend it to non Cage fans though. <gasps> Humanoids from the Deep, nineteen eighty. That was definitely a, a fun ride. Um, but last but no, I got two more. Climax from twenty eighteen, uh, French horror film getting heavily heavily uh, lauded. Have you seen this, Eric? Gaspar Noe is fucking, uh, it's insane. He, he His movies are so fucking weird. Yeah, I saw it. I, I, it wasn't for me. It's, it's fucked up. It's really fucked up. Um, I didn't love it, but I liked it. I, th I mean, it stayed with me. Uh, I think that the premise is uh, you're at a party and like everybody's heavily, heavily dosed on, on awesome LSD. Yeah. At, at Great premise. Time, which is terrifying. But at the same time, it, I, as I'm watching the movie, I'm like, did no one on set ever take LSD? Uh <laughs> Does anyone know what it does to you? Uh, all right, we're just going to have them act weird. <laughs> uh, it was pretty good, though. And But last but not least, I, today I watched Bo Burnham's Inside, uh, which is getting huge, great reviews. People, I've heard people call it genius. I'm not a huge Bo Burnham fan necessarily. Uh -oh. But, uh, you know, he, he, he walled himself up in his, in his apartment for over a year and made this whole thing by himself. And, you know, and it's the word COVID – 
I mean, quarantine, these words don't enter, but it's, but it's all about that period. And I don't think that there's going to be anything more representative of this time period, this of the last you know 18 months or whatever, than this uh, piece of art, this really great piece of art. There, there, It's funny, but I'm particularly curious what you think of it, Mike, because it really deals a lot with mental health issues as well. Um, and I really strongly recommend if any if this interests any of you guys to watch it soon, because like it's very of the now. It's going to feel like a time capsule really quickly. Um, but the music is genuinely really fucking good. I mean, it's like Father John Misty meets Hot Dad. I don't know. It's, but it's, <laughs> fucking, it's really good stuff. Yeah. And I'm, I, it's, it's, it's getting like great reviews. And I think there's a really good reason why. So I'm going to recommend Bo Burnham's Inside. Is that on Netflix? It's on Netflix. Yeah, it's a Netflix special. Of course special. it is. It's Bo Burnham. Bo Burnham, Bo Burnham, Bo Burnham, Bo Burnham. Oh, he's not a comedian anymore. Actually, he was a YouTuber guy. I mix well, him up with Mike Birbiglia. That. That's what happens. Bo Burnham yeah. and Mike Birbiglia are not the same person. They're not, but I can see, I can, see, I can see getting them a little confused. They do have kind of a similar style, but he addresses that as well. I mean, this is this was supposed to be his return to comedy. This was supposed to be a live oh. show, and okay. that obviously didn't happen. Well, then, uh, that's a fine recommendation. I'm going to check that out. I watched Eighth Grade. I actually couldn't finish it. I thought it was it was a tough watch. Oh. Um, yeah. I and, loved but it also the, started to, I don't know, I, I turned it off after like an hour and 10 minutes, not like right away. So. Yeah, that's, you gave it a shot. Promise you, young woman, shot. I thought he was yeah, pretty, pretty really great in that. that. Yeah, oh, yeah I haven't watched that one yet. Uh, Eric Branch, oh. you're in Griffith, Indiana. You have a child, you have a wife, uh, who, by the way, will be on the show in two weeks. So hey. that'd be fun. Angela Branch, from, what do you got? Well, I got to tell you, I got lucky, I got lucky this week. I'm very lucky. Uh, I think I'm, I pretty much liked every movie I saw, and I and they were oh, all new to me. I gotta tell you, they, well, aside from one, but I haven't seen it since I was a kid. Um, so I watched Rush, not the uh, new one, but 1991, uh, Jason Patrick and uh, the uh, incomparable Ooh. Jennifer Jason Lee. Yeah. You guys seen this movie? Uh, these narcotics was, detectives get hooked on drugs, and when it was new, I watched it. When it I it's you know. solid, man, dude. It's a good character piece. Uh, Clapton does the score. You got like Greg Allman in a supporting role. It's fucking good, man. Uh, I thought it was really effective. Uh, no one Clapton. talks about it nowadays. Yeah, Eric Clapton does the score. Though, dude. I don't want to hear that. So, oh, he is. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, He's an anti-vaxxer. He, Oh, and uh, racist. So that's oh, that too. Well, he was, right. he's always been racist. Just everyone suddenly realized, hey, <laughs> this guy said something <laughs> racist on stage in the 1970s. Let's get angry about it 50 years later. Oh, yeah, that's basically that what that works, Very Mike. Well said, so. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. that's exactly what happened. Yeah. I don't know if that Keep really that in mind. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the film. Uh, I thought it was really good. Uh, okay, 1989, we had two underwater like thriller horrors. One was The Abyss, which I, I'm a fan of. 1989, but yeah. But the superior uh, underwater thriller was uh, Leviathan that I watched uh, a few days ago with Peter Weller yeah. and uh, Ernie Hudson, uh, Daniel Stern. Fucking awesome. Like, it's hard R, Stan Win legendary Stan Winston does the creature effects and monster looks fucking fantastic. It reminded me of, remember, some movie I'm not really huge on, although a lot of people are, The Void, like that fucking weird, like, like mega monster that's just composed of like humans and all these other motherfuckers. It's kind of like that monster, like, but if it, you were trapped with it, like, in a deep sea sub. Huh. This is so, a George Cosmatos <laughs> movie. Cobra yeah, George Cosmatos. Obsession continues. That's exactly what I'm saying. So who actually directed it? Yeah, George Cosmatos. Well, apparently he was in charge. I don't know if he uh, This, this got, one he, he actually had directed because it was like probably had to hand it to, like, Peter Weller, like, to take <laughs> over or something, as usual. But uh, I love the picture, man. Uh, I thought it was fucking fantastic. Uh, so, yeah, I definitely recommend that. The Hitcher, I never saw that with Rudger Hauer and C. Thomas Howell from 86. What it's fucking either. awesome. It's like it's on my it, list. It, yeah, it reminds me kind of like early Stephen King, like eighty, like Silver Bullet type, just like really brief, fun, grimy horror. I think you'd really like it. Rutger Hauer's fucking insane in it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's solid. Probably, that's unfortunate. C. Thomas Howell did the movie. Probably got buried because he did Soul Man that same time, which is. Uh, problematic. Been a problem yeah. for him. And, it was a yeah. bit of a hit when it came out, guys. Soul Man was that. definitely Soul Man was absolutely <laughs> a hit. It was on HBO. Uh, yeah. I saw it like fifty yeah. times when I was a child because it was just on cable all the time. So I'm well aware of what it was, but yeah. now does it hold up? I've never seen Soul Man. Yeah. I don't know if I want to take a look at that. Uh, I've seen the cover <laughs> box out of control. So yeah, uh, Roxanne oh. from '87. I'd never seen Roxanne. Like, what you turn it on? Yeah, I turned it on. and I'm like. 
I don't know if I can deal with this nose. Like this nose is so <laughs> out of control. I think that's why I stayed away my whole life. It's like there's no way this nose happens. Yeah, yeah. Here watch this. It's the retelling of the Bozo Fest, guys. Right. Yeah, Siriano de Bergiac. And and I gotta tell you, like, I, I fucking loved it, man. Like it starts out, it's just so it takes a little bit to get used to because like Steve Martin is like smarmy, but like he's so like like almost annoyingly smarmy in this, but you get used to it fast and it, it's charming as hell. Like it's fucking so weird. And you know, Daryl Hannah, who I love, she's like the biggest like flake in the world in this movie. I think he'd be better <laughs> off without her uh, at the end. But like, I, I loved it, man. I was laughing I out it. loud. I love Roxanne. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I missed it all these years. So my top two, uh, you guys, the first one, I, I cannot believe I've never seen this from 1990. Like, I always heard it sucked. And, like, I remember reading reviews back in the day. They're like, oh, this is bullshit. Uh, Flatliners. Oh, it's good. I mean, it's I was good then. It's awesome. It's so good. I'm telling right. you, I loved it. So while I was watching, I said out loud many times, like, this is fucking awesome. I'm, like, looking around, like, is anyone else seeing this? Or <laughs> Schumacher. Like, you just can't get enough Schumacher, can you? I, I'm telling you, man. I think I said that out loud, too. God bless. He was so he, he was so effective. Like, he's, like, he just, like, churned out these movies that were just like fucking really fun. Like it's kind of like a good companion piece to lost boys. Uh, not for Sutherland withstanding, but uh, I no, loved it great. so I much, it. man. I, I, I don't know why I missed this for so long. Like the, the nightmare scenarios, like the, the whole story, like it's one thing to come up with this concept. Let's say these, these <laughs> medical students like decide to like undergo this and the, but to execute it this well and have it pay off and be so layered and just get better and better and better as it goes on. I fucking loved it so much, man. I'll praise it to the day I to the day I flatlined. I haven't seen it in a um, long time, so I liked it when I was um, younger. Dude, I, I'd have to check in again. But I, you know, it's I, promising I, that you liked it. I almost stopped it and, and saved it for the show, man. I, I'm begging you to take a look, Mike. It's it's um, incredible. Uh, finally, you know, I've been surprised in the past, and this this might even top the last time I was blown away. I haven't seen this since I was seven years old in the theater. Uh, <laughs> Funny. Travis, you talked about it a, a, a few months ago. Funny Farm, the George yeah. Roy Hill comedy. Yeah, yeah. Based on a Jay Cronley book, like Let It Ride and Quick Change. I, I was bored in the theater. I remember distinctively being like seven, like, is this over? Can we get out of here? This is so fucking boring. I was laughing my ass off the entire time. Like it, it's so funny. Like this is one of the easily one of the most underrated comedies of, of the eighties, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, and, a, and a Christmas movie when you really get down to it. He, granted, like the whole town is like a bunch of assholes, but like yeah. the Christmas stuff is Big genuinely time. charming and like enjoyable to watch. I loved it, man. I fucking loved. I, it was I was laughing the entire time. It was laugh out loud funny. So if you've been dogging it all these years, being like, "Oh yeah, the movie that's like not vacation, but like he's on that tractor," it's fucking hilarious. I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Do you have a visitor at your home, Michael? Is that what's happening right now? Oh. Yeah, what was that? <laughs> yeah, that um, a ghost. Um, my pal's out there. This this guy's so cool. This little groundhog woodchuck guy. He comes out here and he just he comes oh, right by the porch. You do a visitor. Just, All right. Yeah, it's, I was trying to put the camera on him to see through the window, but I guess it didn't work. And he just mm -hmm. goes around there and he's just starting eating shit in the ground and he You'll, comes out there every day. As soon as I make a move, though, terrifies that fat. Like I couldn't catch him. I guarantee I could catch him when he runs away. I don't want to catch him, but yeah, it's just funny. Want to. Um, grass is green, so we just saw Cy Cy Parish. Yeah, the, the, I had the green screen door. on too. Yeah, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Weird Cy Parish, the groundhog. Hey, giant Cy Parish is looking at you through your door, and you're I like, smell <laughs> a screenplay, horror screenplay, guys. Something we got a sequel for you though. guys. Second hour photo, two hour photo. Does that make more sense? <laughs> well, the photo business is dead. But, photo. Yeah, anyways, well, that's not all this dead. Period piece, maybe. So, anyways, yeah, Funny Farm's a classic. So it's really, it's like one of, those, it's like Meet the Parents. Like everything's going wrong movies, but it's still classic. Uh, so yeah, I, all I hear is everyone trash be like, oh, it's not funny. I, I think my friend Dave, our mutual friend. Well, you have friend, to like uh, Chevy. You have to like Chevy Chase, I think, to like it. That's the not thing. It's does. like when it started, I was like. Knowing what I know now, like how uh, what a colossal prick he is, it was hard for me to kind of get into it because I'm like, this guy's an asshole and he's playing an asshole. Why am I watching this? But it just keeps getting funnier. Suspend, and funnier. suspend. Yeah, well suited yeah, so. for the role, you know. I mean, <laughs> you were born. He was a, in fact, he was born to play one of the uh, locals. Anyways, uh, yeah, cool stuff. That's it, Eric. We're in the we're in the can. Great job. All right. I'm pissed about this movie. I never saw it, and I watch it. I'm pissed about it. A Perfect Murder? Fucking annoying-ass movie, man. <laughs> so annoying. Sucks. 
It sucks, it a, right? It was a huge hit when it came out. And it fucking sucks. Thank you. Good, because I was I wasn't sure how that. I, I assume you guys had seen it for sure because I missed fucking it. Fucking terrible, man. Dial in yes. for murder. The original is a fucking masterpiece. Perfect okay, murder is great. fucking well, terrible. Even me Vigo couldn't better, save it. I feel no, closer no to you guys now. Thank you. That really <laughs> helps. Uh, by the way, it's Michael Douglas, uh, Vigo, you know, Gwyneth Paltrow. Three great actors, but <laughs> trash. All right, then uh, I watched I Love You, Philip Morris. And this movie is fantastic, man. It's based on a true story of a real guy who's not named Philip Morris, the guy that Jim Carrey plays, uh, Stephen Russell. He's a, he's a wild character, and this movie is awesome because it is so gay, and they're just shoving it in your face, and I love that <laughs> shit. In yeah. 2009, we're a little more progressive, obviously, at that point, but we're still growing, blah, blah, blah. I just, I was... I laughed. Carrie wasn't like Carrie mixes in the classic Carrie stuff, but then Ewan McGregor is a sweet, innocent lover and <laughs> falling in love in prison. It's just so funny. There's a scene where they dance together in their jail cell while this other guy is just getting beat to death in the other cell next to them because he won't back down on his scruples because his word means everything. It's just so funny, man. And I, I thought it was great. So I'm strongly recommending I Love You, Philip Morris, if you've never seen it uh, you guys seen it yeah it's good oh eric you should check it out yeah it's good okay good approved all right then i watched uh i watched blade Runner 2049 did i say that last week or no because i thought we texted no. about it but i didn't actually bring it up on the show i feel like we talked about it but it's like your hair like we we, we talk about too many things <laughs> off off camera we got we should only have discussions on the show but ladies and gentlemen <laughs> he, has, he has cut his hair and his beard he looks like kane hotter now if you can't see him <laughs> Worlds are colliding. A little bit. Yes, it's true. Uh, anyways, I watched. I'd never seen it. I watched it for the first time, and I happened and? to watch it. I happened to watch it of fucking six ten twenty one. It was fucking crazy. <laughs> it kind of freaked me out a little bit. I got. I'm, I know it's not about me, but it was the day that's involved in the film, so it was kind of fun. Wow. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't read a damn thing about this movie, and that's I thought cool. it was beautiful film, mm -hmm. really gorgeous film, and. I guess people are kind of pissed about it. Uh, it didn't do well at the box office, so people were disappointed. Um, was that Lubezki? Was that our buddy Lubezki again? Emmanuel? That was, that was uh, Villain Wade. Yeah. Was oh, 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 we're Deacons. talking about cinematography? Yeah, so, is that Roger Deakins? Okay. Amazing. Yeah. I loved it. I liked it better than the original. I think universally it's uh, applauded. Oh, no. oh, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I like it better than the first one. Oh, you know, I'm, just of course, I'm just playing. Of course, you are entitled to your opinion, sir. I, Ooh, I, no, I, no. I, I love the, the, the original. Like, no. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's a slow film, though, so you got to relax. You might as well take a sedative and kind of take it down a notch. Maybe have a couple drinks. All right, but I do recommend yeah, Gosling. Runner. Gosling is like in full, just standing there doing nothing mode for like three yeah. hours. <laughs> you know, if he if he hadn't done that movie, uh, what's that movie he did with Steve Carell? Something about love. Uh, oh, uh, you know what I'm talking about crazy love, stupid, crazy, crazy stupid, stupid love, yeah. love. crazy stupid love. Thank you. Yeah. Where he's like, he's like emotive and like the cool guy and kind of more lively. Yeah. Because otherwise, he is just constantly <laughs> all the movies we watched from him in the 2010s. I love Drive. Doesn't say a word. We know that. And then when he does the uh, you know the Chi and Franchi films, he's also very chill, very low key. Chi and just, Right. I wanted to be a dick about it. But, <laughs> no, I'm just uh, kidding. but you are right. You are right about that. See in France, Mike. See in so France. Nine Gosling. Is he Franche. a good actor? I mean, he's not is a he bad actor? actor. He is a great actor. I think he's a See, great actor. See, that's what I'm. That's what I want to argue about. Maybe he's a great actor. He's I don't know. There's no argument. Uh, Lou Valentine, Half Nelson, alone. Uh, yeah, let alone yeah. all the other ones. L Lars and the Real Girl. I mean, yeah. I, th I think I think that the man is a, an incredibly good actor, and I think that part of the reason that I can see that, like, I mean, all right, I I think that a lot of people were used to thinking good actor. We're thinking fucking Pacino and De Niro <laughs> and Pesci. We're thinking all these like huge performances. He's scenery chewing motherfuckers literally right? on fire in the background of devil's advocate <laughs> ah! or even or even my love for nick cage right like i mean they, like they go big but but gosling rarely goes big like he emotes he, do, he does little he does i mean he does a lot with a little and that's what i really love about him like he's he hmm. he's smolders right like he's like uh uh and but yeah he, like you can't take your eyes off him and i i don't know what the fuck he's been doing but i'm ready for him to start making some movies again i know he did uh that uh 
uh, space movie. First, man. And movie. Now he's going to yeah. do another space movie. He's going to play another astronaut. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, bro? No one cares when you go to the moon at all. Uh. <laughs> Speaking of other space movies, I never saw. I saw The Martian for the first time. Going to Mars. Well, and yeah. uh, it's Ridley Scott. Yep. It's a it's a fine film. It's fun. You know, it it's not fine. legendary, but it's fine. It's it's fine. It's, it's fine. Just fine. It's cool. You know, they try to really mix actual science shit and to survive for once, as opposed to like I don't know, like oh, what are you gonna do here? They really kind of focused on the actual science from the novel, which was I think an important part of making the movie. So I think that's cool, and it's a fun watch. Good times. Good for you, Matt Damon. And I watched Buffalo sixty six fucking never saw this one and i've heard about it for decades now like because it's been literally two decades since it came out in 1998 and you know this guy i just don't understand why he gets all vincent gets all this love why does vincent gallo get all this love because somebody gave him some money and he was able to direct a movie with some legitimate stars like angelica houston and christina ricci I I just I don't have any idea where has he been and why how was he able to make those movies like who is this yeah, guy? What the- it's still, I mean, like, I'll turn movies off a lot more frequently now, but for a long time, it was one of, like, one of the only movies I had ever turned off. Was Buffalo really? Yeah. Oh, I, I got, see I got, that. I got to uh, where she's dancing in the in the bowling alley, and I'm just like, this is fucking dumb. I'm dumb. <laughs> That's actually a decent trip into it. So you did try. I'll give you I'll that. Give much. A shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what a weird movie! Of course, Kevin Corgan's in it, and I, that's why I made my comment. Kevin Corgan's in like every indie film in the '90s, late '90s, 2000s. He's just everywhere. He's hard to miss. But Buffalo '66, when I actually was pissed, and I watched the whole thing. But when I ended, I kind of was like, you know, it wasn't bad actually. So I'm, I'm kind of torn, which is really bothering me right now. I'm kind of pissed about that. <laughs> you follow it up with the brown bunny. <laughs> there it is. See, it can never happen. You can never talk about Vincent Gallo no, within two minutes of somebody bringing up the blowjob because you, you know it, you asked where he went. That's kind of the last <laughs> thing you did, right? Like yeah, he's like, I'm gonna so. push the envelope and put a blowjob in a, in a movie. And funnily enough, he hasn't really been around since. I don't know why. Maybe yeah, Parker wasn't fair. ready for that. Yeah, I guess you're probably <laughs> right about that. Well, kudos to him for that. I'll give him credit there. So yeah, that was uh boy, that was something, man. That was jeez. Uh I watched U571. This movie fucking sucks. It's a piece of <laughs> shit, trash, disgrace to history. I well, didn't it has know Matthew that. McConaughey in it, right? <laughs> it does. Yeah. So th- this is a you know, I'm finishing jump up with McConaughey. Full on- yeah, but Jumbo Jovi's in it and Bill Paxton and it's, but it's just so oh. historically inaccurate. And people were, oh. even countries were pissed about it. England was furious about this movie because they made America look like they're the ones that had gotten <laughs> the hands on the Enigma code breaking machine, which was breaking German code, which was the fucking British who first did it and did it best. So they demanded that text be put in at the end of the movie. That's how bad <laughs> this movie was. And so at least they did that, I guess. Uh, but fucking, why? Why? I, I don't understand. I don't understand why history has to do that. I watched a movie called The Rookie with Dennis Quaid. It's about a real guy who was 30-something years old and actually got called up to the major leagues. It's a true story. His name was Jimmy Morris, and he pitched briefly, and it did happen. So it's simple. You know where it's going. You got to follow the challenge. Okay. You know, it's a Disney movie. What do you expect? It's Dennis Quaid, All-American. Do you think, De- do you think Dennis Quaid's face hurts when he smiles? <laughs> His smile know. is so huge. I don't, he does have a big smile, but I always mix him and Kurt Russell up because I have to remember that Kurt Russell was with Goldie Hawn and Dennis Quaid was with Meg Ryan. And I always mixed them up as a kid when I was younger. I would always mix up their couplings, and that's not, my not fault. Not anymore. Not anymore. No. I got it down now. I think I got it down real good. I mean, they're not together anymore. Oh, oh, right. Yeah, of course. There's that. I think both of those are over, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I, think that's, uh, yeah. I watched Peter Bogdanovich's Mask. Wow. Love Mask. Mask. So good. What a great movie with uh, Eric Stoltz. Yes, I know the Rocky that. Dennis story. So I didn't watch it since I was a kid, and it was a it's a great watch, great effort all around. Classic Sam Elliott, even when he's younger. I mean, this is nineteen eighty five. He's younger, but he's still just like, yep, like with the mustache. It's just classic Dark. Sam Elliott, and Cher is amazing, and <laughs> it's a really good movie. It's heartfelt. It's not over the top though, but it's kind of genuine and kind of grounded at the same time so if you've never seen mask the rocky dennis story i'd strongly recommend it it's a it's a heartwarming tale it's uplifting 
I, I just hadn't seen it since I was a kid. I had a lot of memories of like bikes, you know, motorcycles and jean jackets, but <laughs> and of course, you know, his face, he was fucked up. He had an awful, awful, awful disease. It was terrible. But he makes the best of it and it can make you a little emotional. So if you're not ready to be emotional, I would say don't watch that movie because it is, you know, it's a tough break. Didn't kind of didn't go his way. Cher is fantastic in the film. She really, 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 really is. And I think is she for sure in it this time. Yes. This so one. If I watch it, I'm not going to be disappointed. Not Bernie. I'm not going to get be a Bernie McClane. mix up. Okay. Yeah. This is not going to be a Bernie <laughs> mix up. She's definitely in mask and you can't miss her because her hair is massive. That classic massive oh, 80s share hair. This for her. Boo! It's like this. It's very like yeah. this is the, the actual shape. It's massive. So. They would like go in the bathroom <laughs> and get all that Aquanet going on. They like tease it up. Remember? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I did the same thing. And she plays uh, a '60s woman in Mermaids a couple of years later. She's still big hair, you know. What I don't know what it is, but she was a big haired kind of lady. Uh, a couple I didn't mention that I <laughs> I watched a movie called House Arrest from 1996. This is about kids that lock their parents in their basement because they don't want them to get divorced. They want them to work out their problems by locking them in the basement. Kevin Pollack and Jamie Lee Curtis are trapped in the basement. And then the other kids in school say, that's a great idea. We've all got issues with our parents too. And they all gather them up. Wallace Sheen, uh, Christopher McDonald, oh, <laughs> it's just this whole crew gets shoved down there. And I used to like it as a kid. And I gotta tell you, I laughed. I had some good times and it was a, it was a good movie. It's stupid as fuck. Apparently it has like this uh, status now where people get together and watch it and make fun of it like it's like one of those movies but it has a weird status that people enjoy it but maybe not necessarily for the reasons the original director intended them <laughs> so gotcha so there you go that'll do her another episode of the cinema nine podcast thanks for tuning in next week we're going to do no we gotta do one hour photo i'm just kidding one hour photo time eric branstrom has selected a 2002 film starring robin williams Connie Nielsen with black hair. I don't see that very often. Really and threw me. It does. You know, you're like, is that? Oh, uh, it is her. Yeah. It took me forever really to figure it out. And then that guy, the other guy who, even when this movie came out, I was like, who the fuck is this guy? The, the okay. husband. This guy. He's he's not even around now, is he? Do we even know his name? Random guy. I'm guessing see? Josh or Luke. <laughs> Looks like it's maybe a Lucas. <laughs> he does. Yeah. yeah. Let's find Mixed out this bozo's the- name. Josh Charles, Josh Lucas, yeah, who knows? He looks. His name is Michael Vartan. Hey, all right, he's a cool. Mike. He's a Michael. Good for you. Also Vartan. known for his performances in Never Been Kissed and Never Saw it. Alias. So he was on Alias. Oh, when the this, TV show. The TV show when this movie came out. I'm bet. I'm betting that he was like, uh, supposed to be like you know, you know, he's supposed to be a bigger deal. And then people saw this movie and went. Eh. We had some old comments from Luke here. I missed them, so I don't. Even, I have no idea what these are referencing. Keep talking, Travis. Talking I'm about? almost there. Oh, I guess he was close uh, to finishing something. Oh, because he's yeah. Climax. Speaking hey! of the movie Climax, yeah. Um, Someone's got a great smile and great butt. That's Anyways, wonderful. That's so fantastic. Robin Williams stars in this movie. Uh, Mark Romanek. Eric, his first of two movies. Yeah. Well, is this why you chose it? You're a big Mark Romanek fan, Eric. I chose it because I wanted to see if the third time was a charm for a 2002 Robin Williams playing a weirdo movie. Death to Smoochie, Insomnia, and then this one, I think, was the last one. Yeah, his, oh, his villainous oh. turn in the early 2000s. He like took this sudden turn where he's like, I'm going to play villains. If you had picked Death to Smoochie, it would have been so disappointed. I'm so glad. Please don't pick that movie. I came I this close a week or I two ago. It. I know one of you guys, lo- I'm sure that, because you guys <laughs> watch the shit out of that over at Jimmy's house. When I remember that a lot. And I just wasn't in a part of it because I didn't connect. So. Yeah. A lot, it turns out a lot of people didn't connect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't the only one. Uh, all right. So anyway, so Eric, you chose this movie, 2002. It came out uh, 20 years, 19 years later. Uh, yeah. Did you see this in the theater? Did you see all three of those movies in the theater? <laughs> this is the only one I didn't see in the in the, in the theater. I, you know, I got to be honest with you. I wasn't blown away by this uh, when I first saw it. I remember a lot of people talking about it being this cutting edge thriller for the 2000s. Um, but I was really interested in taking another look at it, especially considering, you know, digital photography was right on uh, on the way when this came out. So I, I was willing to bet there'd be a lot of allusions to secrecy and privacy and interpersonal relationships because of the advent of that technology. And uh, I, I was uh, surprised at what I saw. So uh, yeah, I was excited. 
Travis, did you see this one in the theater back in the day? I sure did. Yeah, I saw it in theaters. I, I actually was a, I was a Mark Romanek fan. You know, I, I still like his work. I went back and watched uh, The Perfect Drug, the video for Nine Inch Nails' Perfect Drug last night, um, which I long felt is one of the better videos out there. He also did Johnny Cash's Hurt. Um, like he did a lot of really good music videos back in the day. And like, and it was what he was, his name was, you know, back in the day when MTV actually played movies, they would have like, you know, it would be the fucking name of the band, the name of the song, the album that it's from. And at the bottom, they would list the director. And so, you know, I got to know Spike Jones and some other, you know, act, uh, directors that way before they started making films. So like when Mark Roman, like, I, you know, I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm on board with this. And, um, and of course, I was like, you know, I don't, I think this was be, this was after Insomnia, but before Death to Smoochie, I think, if I if I'm correct, um, I could be wrong, but still, it was it was it still felt novel for him to take to take that villainous uh, role. So um, I was I was definitely on board with it, and I remember seeing it in theaters and feeling pretty underwhelmed and not watching it since. I don't think I may have watched it once more since. Um, this is my first time in a long time. That's one wow. other thing, Mike. I, I think I missed this in the theaters because I had soured on on Robin because he let me down over and over again. I, with, I, I, with I, think we gotta I, I hate to do this, but people are going to be pissed. Uh, there's an issue. Let's fix the audio. We got an audio oh, issue. Geez, it's a technical rats issue. The wires. Yeah, I, I, I want to let <laughs> yeah. it go for a while, but we just can't. I thought maybe go away. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's really worse, if anything. Sorry, buddy. Maybe Not leave and fault. come back or something. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, I, know, you, you I, I remember... The first time I saw this movie was on DVD at my mom's house in Brighton, and I rented it from somewhere. This is 2002, so I grabbed it, and it was in that stupid plastic clear case. I can see it very well. I popped it on. I remember saying, who the fuck is this guy? I remember <laughs> being like, wow, this is an interesting film. This is intense. And I remember being like, whoa, this is a, this is a new move. This is a new turn here. And the blonde hair was very distracting. Yeah. And also... <laughs> Cy Parrish's full name is Seymour, apparently, on the IMDb title card. Seymour Parrish. So I didn't know that. That's right. fun. I thought it was maybe short for like Cyrus or something. I didn't know what it yeah. was. Yeah. Cy, Cy Seymour? I don't get that. Uh, Eric, right. are you okay? Yeah, I, you know, how do I sound? Yeah, it's about the same. Yeah, there's rats in the wires. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, yeah. these things happen, Travis. We've been doing this show for a long time, and you just never know. This is our 63rd episode. Sometimes, you know, there's <laughs> technical difficulties. Sorry, guys. It, it, it happens. Society and Society. whatnot. But I I, um, I do know that I did not guess this score. Did you guess the score on IMDb, Travis? Oh, I, I actually didn't look for once, finally, fucking finally. Um, let's see. I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess high, but not in the sevens high. I'm going to say 6.1. 6.2. 6.2. Yeah, that's. I think that's a little low because I feel like people do dig on that. I'm gonna say six seven. I'm gonna say six seven. Eric, Eric, what about you? Did you look it up, Eric? No, you're still allowed to talk. I mean, it's just yeah. yeah <laughs> Maybe. You, you want to? Uh, so uh, some microphone issues. Microphone issues, folks. You you you, uh, you know blah blah yeah 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 yeah. And the answer is. 6.8 almost oh. to a seven almost to a All seven right. what do you think of that that's that's cool i could dig it i can dig it <laughs> <laughs> Yo, i can dig on that absolutely I, I, I don't remember this movie being that well received do you guys i thought it was like people were like well this is intense i, I at least some of the yeah. people's responses were solidly received i didn't i don't remember it being terribly received but also it wasn't like a big time hit so I, rem I remember unanimous praise. Sounding good. Yeah. Um, I, I remember like people generally liking it, but I don't remember it being like, I don't know. I just don't remember it being like a, like a, like a, like a movie people talked about. I don't remember it being this big a deal as it seemed like it could have been or should have been maybe even, I don't know. Um, maybe I'm, you know, in my own, in my own mind here. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was going to say going back. I, I'm sorry. Do I oh, sound, you sound great, going? man? Top notch. You're back. I, I, I got to tell you that the reason why I missed it in theaters is the main reason is because Robin Williams had soured on me, man. We're talking about 
Patch Adams, What Dreams May Come, and like Bicentennial Man. By the time this yeah. came around, even with the hype, I remember being like, I, I can't trust it because I trusted all three of those, went to the theaters, and I was like, yeah. these are fucking horrible. Like, I can't do it unless I know for a fact this is good. That's a good That's point. A good. I, see, I, I didn't see those in theaters, um, but I did see all three of them, and they were, well, no, I saw What Dreams May Come in theaters, and I still think that movie sucks. <laughs> uh, there's, been lot, there's been a lot of talk about putting that movie on this show. I'm like, fuck, please don't. What? Just, oh, oh, my God. God. Who's saying that? Who's saying I, that? Well, it's been like one of the ones that shows up in like a lot of requests and stuff. And I'm like, always oh, like, what? Oh, oh, you're right. I mean, like, yeah. it's yeah. Just, sometimes just doing this podcast is rough because I know like people tune in like, oh, they're going to talk about this movie I love. Because I've done that with other movie podcasts. I'm like, oh, they're going to talk about this movie I love. And I start listening. I'm like, oh. So you didn't like Road to Wellville? Well, fuck you! And I turn oh. it off. <laughs> no, I, no. Even Insomnia, man. That, I remember that came out in May, and I'm sorry. I I tried so many times to rewatch it. I find the film interminably fucking boring. I'm I'm sorry. Wow. I'm no fan of Insomnia either. Hmm. I, I definitely revisit. saw Insomnia in the theater, and I was. It wasn't. It was a tough follow up to Memento. Tough to top that initially. So, yeah. But it was like yeah, it was okay. I remember saying, "Oh, this is all right. This is still interesting, and it's beautifully shot and twenty four hours of daylight. Fascinating topics." And, but and, and that was Eric the first had. thing he'd done. Uh, Williams had done where he was the villain, as as far as I recall. Yeah, so it still had that at least going for it, which was unique. Well, that's a really good point Eric made, though. You're right. All those trash movies that came up to this point. You know, even uh, Jack was in '96 too. Oh, that was like yeah. so. I uh, so yeah. Father's Day. Oh, that uh, that yeah, puts a true. very clear memory in my mind now. I was like, I, I kind of like you know, one hour photo is pretty cool, but I think a lot of people didn't get to see it. Travis, that kind of goes to your point. Like, eh, Robin Williams has bummed us out. So eventually, when the word got around, like, hey, this movie's uh, you know, it's pretty damn good. He might be back. I think it was, I saw it on DVD myself. So after the fact, I think more people saw yeah. it. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna guess that he bummed himself out because that, that was a pretty long run of movies that were pretty meh, and yeah. uh, some of them were even pretty well celebrated, like Patch Adams. But I have a hard time feeling Walk like out. anybody. It's that I think that movie has always sucked. Philip Seymour Hoffman notwithstanding, I, I <laughs> never, I never cared for it. Um, out. I've never seen it. Yeah, it's not great. Um, How about the uh, yeah. Rotten Tomato score, though, guys? Or do you want to say Check something? Out. No, no, no. Yeah. Hey, hey, all right, good times. 82% for the critics. 82. That's, That's an high. excellent score. That's really high, yeah. And we got a full tub of buttery popcorn at 65% for the audience. So <laughs> slight discrepancy, even though it's a full tub of butterly, delicious, fake buttered popcorn, mm. which uh, do you guys put um, seasoning? Sure. Do you guys put those fake yeah, seasonings on your ew, popcorn? No, like the- no. It's so I, disgusting when I see people shaking that like bright orange <laughs> shit on their popcorn. Ranch. I put the popcorn <laughs> in the garbage where it belongs because it's popcorn. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> wow. Wow. Now that is... Yeah, what I do is I cut a us. hole in the bottom of the, the popcorn and uh well Oh uh, have you seen the movie Diner by any chance? <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> <laughs> the popcorn sucks after like ten minutes. That's what sucks about it. And I never finish it. It's just a rip off. Okay, that's my point. But I never, ever, ever put that ranch seasoning or that like you said, that orange flavored <laughs> like I don't want ranch popcorn. That sounds gross. It's not even real ranch. Go away. <laughs> Would uh, you want to dump news. real ranch on your popcorn? Like just like a No, yeah, like even if there's real ranch, seems, I wouldn't use it either. You're right. It's complicated for movie watching. Like you got butter, buttery fingers yeah. and ranch and shit all over <laughs> you. Going where in a bib. Mrs. Dash shows up in the middle of the movie. <laughs> hey, you like the popcorn? Um, do you you guys know that we uh, apparently have made contact with Dustin Thompson online. I don't know if this is real or not. Now I This is true. This is true. I I, I deep stalked him. I wanted to to email him, um, and uh, I started seeing what can I find. You know, just basically, I just kept on googling Destin Thompson email, and I found out oh, he's he was originally from London, apparently, like from Britain. Really? Um, yeah, didn't know that. Um, hmm. We might find some reviews under the name Destin Howe, H O W E, because he changed his name halfway through his career. Um, and he's got a band called fuck me i forget cairo steve or something like that cairo yeah. fred oh fred God, cairo i think it's called um uh and wow. i listened to some of it and it was actually not bad our boy, <laughs> no. our boy is singing and it really it really was i'm not just you know i'm it it actually was. Was pretty good yeah it's actually it actually was pretty good um and eric wrote him a very calm and measured and good email saying like hey like you know, would you come on the show? And I'm really happy you wrote that email because I would have written something like, 
hey, we think you're a joke. Wait, no, I back up. No, we, we love you. No, we're obsessed with you. Wait, no, let me back up. That's not it either. Like, we have this running yeah. joke where we're obsessed with you. Fuck. We got the latest is seen 20 hours ago. Radio silence. We got ghosted by Destin Thompson. Badge of honor, man. Man. Uh, we should be happy with the follow back on the Instagram and, yeah, and leave it at that. It. We, no. <laughs> we don't need to harass this man in his day to day life. <laughs> well, he definitely. Yeah, we'll leave it open. It's funny that Eric was the measured guy here because Eric, you're so passionate. I'm impressed. I'm going to give you credit for that. Well done, sir. Well done. I want to thank Grammarly.com for helping me out. <laughs> that email. Uh, <laughs> All right, so here's Destin Thompson from 2002, August hey! 30th. August. 30th, 2002. Williams's exacting performance, not a note of it is unconsidered, makes us feel more for Psy than we'd like to. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, that's I, decent. I agree with that statement. Terry Lawson of the Detroit Free Press. Hey, Terry. Williams finally gets a role so smartly written, so this makes sense at the time, we forget not only that we are watching Williams the dramatic actor, but that we are watching Williams at all. Yeah, okay. I can yeah, go I guess, along with yeah, that. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, I, I always would question the blonde hair choice, especially since there's so much white. Like, why not just go with white? Even white hair. <laughs> uh, and why are you shaving that thing so perfectly across? Well, anyways. But, like, um, <laughs> other than that, like, I, I do feel like this is one of the roles that uh, I think it's, like, from the moment the movie starts, like, he's holding himself differently. You know, like he, like I, it just feels like a different character more than, and he's. I think he's a great actor, or was a great actor, but uh, he, yes, he, he. This is this is a, a role he gets more absorbed in. I think than most of the stuff that he did. Definitely, you know, I, uh, there's very few actors, and I'd be hard pressed to f- even name a couple right now that could do what he does in this. Especially, I first noticed it after, like the first like three creepy things he does. I'm. I'm still with him and I still kind of feel the sympathy there without him really having to do that much. And I got to imagine that's pretty difficult for an actor to, to pull off. I mean, if it's Dennis Quaid, I'm like, Oh, this guy's a fucking creep. I hate him. Like what's somebody kill him, put him in jail. He's a weirdo, but like right <laughs> off the get go, I, I feel bad for a side. Okay. Yeah. All right. uh, a couple more here. We'll move on to that. We got Roger Ebert saying William plays Cy, another of his open faced smiling madmen. Like the killer in Insomnia. Hmm. He does this so well, you don't have the slightest difficulty accepting him in the role. And uh, we got to have a negative one, too, here. This is from Manola Dargis of the LA Times. Manola. That's with an H, by the way. Manola. It sounds like another clever, if pointless, excursion into the abyss. And that's more or less how it plays out. (laughs) (laughs) Right. That was a female perspective. I thought we wanted. I don't know if this is a gender bender type well, movie in terms of like. Woman. Yeah, it's one woman's opinion. So, I, but I want to get a negative one regardless too. But it turns out overwhelmingly, like you said, the critics are fans of this movie, and I think there's weird undertones here. If you watch this from perspective where you have a family or you don't have a family, you know, if you're a mother or a father, um, that's what I was saying when I'm thinking about that from the traditional role point. Yeah, I imagine that would make a pretty big difference as a as a as a non parent. I, I was probably less disturbed than some people would be. But <laughs> I, I promise, I'm disturbed by the movie. Um, <laughs> I, I promise. I, I'm I'm definitely like with Sai like through through the beginning of the movie, like you know the first third or so. But that moment, and I and I had forgotten this moment. Like you know, like wait, do, are we? I'm getting into the movie now. Did, did you have more reviews you wanted to do? I just want. Let me do this. One. <laughs> this yeah, from... do, one, do one more. This is from Nell. Her name's Nell, like the movie Nell with Jodie Foster. Nell. It's awesome. N E L L. Do the voice. Do the voice. <laughs> I, I, I can't even do it. So. <laughs> Nell Minot says, a tense thriller, but if the romantic couple is in the supposedly intimate photo, who is taking the picture? What a dumb, pointless observation for a movie plot summary. <laughs> really She's never heard of a selfie? He's never seen the big arm. Big arm clearly on the side. You can see the arm in the shot. Yeah, come on. This is this come is on. her complaint. Come on, Nell. All right, go All ahead. Right. Go ahead. <laughs> go sing anyway. in your little cabin in the swamp, Nell. <laughs> so uh, I really, really enjoyed Mark Romanek's color palette in this movie. His he has a really strong control of color um, throughout this movie, and I was thinking about that as I'm you know, watching, um, just you know, 
Psy move through all this white and, and dark blue and uh, and mostly white and like cream, you know, and he, and he gets home and it's like sickly pale green a little bit. It's just all this white and cream. He's just trapped in it, just the occasional primary blue. And it all just is so bland. I'm mean, like, even like the clothes he wears, the hair, everything. And then you see the only color in his life. And it's fucking terrifying because it's a wall of pictures of someone else's family. And that's that's when he loses me. That's when I'm like, oh, that's right. This guy's fucking nuts as shit. I forgot. <laughs> that's so yeah. scary when you like that camera just pans over and you realize what, what he's sitting next to. Like, fuck. The production design is, is fucking fantastic. And uh, you got to give credit to Jeff Cronenwith, who is Fincher's cinematographer, who uh does something he's really subtle with the lighting and in, in that he uses all these fluorescents which are like classic like walmart break room lights you'd see in there so yeah, his entire hilarious. world even when he goes home he looks like he's just sitting in the fucking save my break, break room because of these fluorescent bulbs <laughs> yeah and i'm really glad you mentioned um the the production designer um a guy by the name of tom foden I, I agree. I mean, he, I think he did great work, and I like looked at what else he did. This is a guy that also did the ce- uh, the cell from two thousand. Which say what you will about that movie, it's got uh, at least one fantastic D'Onofrio performance in it, and the production design is out fucking standing. Hmm. I was thinking I didn't want to jump to that point, but you say where you lost Cy, where he lost you. Is yeah. that moment with all the photos? Well, not completely. I wouldn't say necessarily. I still feel no, no. Something. That's not what I mean. Like, I don't mean that either. Like. But that's when you realize, like, there's something wrong with this individual. Right. So, but that just makes me think, you know, we're going, I don't want to jump to the end of the movie, but it's too hard for me to talk about this movie without talking about the final discussion he has with Eric LaSalle's detective character, where he releases all this information, which is clearly about him, child abuse, and the, right. you know, you're a father who would never do this, you're a father who would never do that, you're a father who would never, you know, all, and it's right. clearly all about his childhood, which changes Changes the tenor of the movie incredibly. Obviously, save for the end. But what if we had had this uh, information it offered it to us in a different way in a different scene earlier in the movie? I, I'm curious how the movie would play if we had had it like 30 minutes in or we'd found out from the early on that, wow, how did this guy get here? Well, he had a long and tough, difficult road. He was abused as a child, and now he's here. Yeah, um, I'm really glad you brought that up because I was trying to think about that too. Like, Should they have uh, hinted at this? earlier or or save it for the ending i think the only point which it may have benefited from us having that knowledge is in the like the hotel assault which is kind of a problematic scene for me anyway yeah. there's this attempt to like mirror traumatic reenactment where this you know where a traumatized individual is going to reenact victimization in order to integrate or heal from the experience but like if we would have known that that's what he was at least attempting to do i think it could have been more effective is it not pretty fucking obvious though <laughs> when you're watching? I mean, I remember. I mean, to me, it seems pretty obvious. Like, I, he's he's. I mean, like, he, it's the language that he uses. He, it's a game. Smile. You're having fun. We're it's we're just playing. Like, like, yeah. like. I, I think that like you know, what, like when you watch that move, move that moment, it's like ah, like it's easy to infer. Uh, I think personally that like there's the, the, he, there's again, something that's more the happening. End, though. You're talking about in the hotel. Yeah, yeah. In the during the hotel yeah, when yeah. he's taking yeah. the photos, he's saying. Yeah, you're right. Like he's saying, you know, like you know, it's a game. Smile, we're having fun. This is for play. Right. Stuff yeah, like mostly that. towards the end, though, is what I mean. Is well, yeah, that is still towards the end, but that's also like the the moment in the movie when you're most convinced that Sai is a bad person. It's a hard, like like, like yeah. Eric says, it's a it's a hard to watch scene. I mean, people being sexually abused, uh, it's hard to watch. Um, so so yeah, but it, I do think you're getting in the moment like where that motivation is coming from but i agree it's, it's an interesting choice that we don't get that whole like you don't you don't get the real understanding like because i'm watching the movie and i'm thinking most of the, most of the film that like he is like he's what like he gets upset with will uh yorkin right will yorkin will um, yorkin because you know Sai has nothing yorkin has everything and then just uh, doesn't appreciate it so i'm gonna make you appreciate it like a la the fan or something so fortunate that he went to the one photo lab in town she did to get her fit her pictures developed where Sai would know who they were so. well they they went there regularly for years right i mean that, that photo wall like well, i'm talking about before- the, the woman who got hit the cheating pictures developed so. oh yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of good like timing that happens in this movie like when Sai calls uh the r- room service at one point it's yeah. a lot of really convenient timing that really works yeah. out uh yeah. to make this movie work but that's that's okay um yeah. but I, yeah i do think that like uh 
yeah, I'm with Sai for most of the movie, but I think it's an interesting to go back to what the original thing. I do think it's a really interesting choice that they don't really let you know until the end that the sem- that the sympathy that you've been feeling for Sai all along is pretty actually well justified. Uh, although by that point you do know too that well, actually, you still don't know that he hasn't killed anyone. You still don't fully know that he hasn't killed anyone at that point. Whereas, so for me, the real to, to stay on the endings, uh, you know, early. So the, it's a double relief, double release, even like uh, in, as a viewer, because like I really wasn't sure how I felt about this movie until uh, he ex- until you get the pretty well done explanation of like what happened to Sai to traumatize him, and you see that like there was no film in the camera. He wasn't doing that. He's not he's not his father. He's not he doesn't want those photos. He was trying to visit this pain on someone, which is not good. But um. do you think it would have been the, the reason I have kind of an issue with that is because, mainly it's kind of the tone that Roman X sets on it. Like he, he films it and the score is, is making it like this thriller that I have kind of seen a few times before. It kind of a little bit more interesting if he would have maybe just did something different with the tone of that whole sequence. And I was thinking it might even been <laughs> I'm no like uh, expert on this, but would the would that mastery of that reenactment be more effective if Sai like allowed himself to be modeled in these explicit ways? Is that like the is that like how you're supposed to relive this? Have, like reenact what happened to you instead of him doing what supposedly maybe his you know father figure did to to, to the uh, the couple? That kind of confused me. Well, I don't think it's supposed. I think it's pretty clear his father like made him do these things as a child. Yeah. Um, I think that's pretty cut and dry. So he's focused theory, on the fa- he's focused on York and the father. There's so, yeah, a theory clearly- that he did that to his his own children and lost his family, and he's trying to make a muppets of it. So that's, that's a theory out there. We don't have anything to base that on, though. Yeah. I mean, you can make a theory up, sure, but like, I mean, like that's speculation. I, can, I mean, it's interesting. But there's nothing in the film to really supply that, I don't think. Yeah, he's an absolute. To me, it's just like this guy has always been a loner. You can't just become a loner like yeah. that right away. In my, I feel like I, he's I do spent worry many about, years alone. I worry about his gerbil. Who's taking care of the gerbil? I yeah, mean, that's. Uh, I, I thought that might bother you. I, <laughs> I thought of you actually. Uh, but he's been at the Save Mart for eleven years, so we do know that. That's concrete information we yeah. have. He's been at that same photo lab for eleven years, and I think Man. that they, that he's been serving the Yorkins that entire time because we get like the, the beginning of the wall. We see them like moving into their home, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you get like Jake is a baby, right? Like so, he I think he's actually obsessed with them before Jake's even born, if I'm correct. Um, yeah, yeah, they have the pictures are there before the child is there. He's got the dumb wig. Yorkin's got a dumb wig in a photo that they did. <laughs> so like, imagine, yeah. imagine doing all those photos for the movie. Like, hey, dude, we got to put this wig on you because you got to be like 10 years ago. And, <laughs> right. All right, After like on. a decade or so, your boss is going to notice that you've been using up all this extra film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, before we go away from that, like, that's one of the reasons I was pleasantly surprised by this recent viewing because if you were to ask me like the plot of this, like before I watched it on this most recent one, I'd be like, Oh, like he terrorizes this family because he's weird. But like, that's not really it at all. In fact, yeah. once they start showing just the pictures of will and you get a sense that Cy, like he only wants to be uncle Cy. Like he's not trying to take the place of, of will. He just wants to be involved with this family. That's mm-hmm. infinitely more interesting than just some psycho one to replace the dad. Is it? I mean, cause like, so- <laughs> This is this is a question I had as I as I as, as I, like after I watched the movie like like do we as an audience do we want there to be more blood in this movie or is that am I just a sicko because like I just kind of feel like there's like like this is an unconventional movie and that no one gets murdered it's a stalker movie it's a like because it's a thriller it's almost a horror movie almost but there's yeah. but the only the only blood in it is in uh, a dream sequence Michael um, yep. But a, but an obvious dream sequence, so it's it gets a pass, right? Wait, which one's that? When he's when blood is squirting out of his eyeballs. And oh yeah, the, no, that's not the one that gets me though. The fucking it's the fantasy, sitting in, the fa- yeah! where he's shitting when he's shitting in another man's toilet, sitting in the car. Yeah, yes! <laughs> when he's sitting in his car for they really drag that out to the point that yeah. I had forgotten. I'm like, oh Same. shit! Is when he stands up in that sweatshirt and they come in, I'm like, oh, is this real? I actually bought into it, and I was me so too. pissed to find out that it was a. Fraud. That <laughs> got, got me. You. That bothered me. It did. It got me. Like it. I got got. <laughs> I made a note. 
I'm like, yeah. Michael doesn't like this. <laughs> that was some bullshit, man. That was just, I mean, yeah, he did so many things. He went to the upstairs kid's room. He grabs a drink. He takes a dump. He's sitting on the couch watching, by the way, Michigan State football, which I don't know how they got approval to be in a stalker movie. That's actual Michigan State Spartan football, which seems, <laughs> side note, weird side note, maybe uh, Roman X a Big Ten fan or something. But at any rate, that did bother me, and then he, there he is. Flashes back to him sitting in his car. Ah, never mind. Let's go Drive home. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I had to kill some time and fill, put a little filler in the movie. Sorry. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I do remember the other dream sequence being like a pretty kind of a big deal. Like uh, among like even like horror aficionados, it's like a fucking startling scene. Uh, yeah, that's um, what's that's bogus about it, too, Eric, is that he it's a classic jump scare. And this movie's not a jump scare movie. And that when he crushes his eyes. Yeah. All right. And is, uh, yeah, I remember that. That's bullshit. I thought I bothered me, actually. I have a theory, though. Um, so this movie, I, it's like pretty obviously heavy on eye imagery, right? Like when he like blows into that that convention, that conference, and there's like a giant picture of an eye being more operated than Blade on. More, not not as much as Blade Runner. <laughs> Uh, but like, and again, there's also like a lot of use of color, right? There's like, like you barely get the color red until he sees the pictures of Will Yorkin and then he's in the, he's in the red room and it's all red, you know, then because oh, red is anger. What, what do you know? Um, so I think that like the, um, the blood in the eyes is supposed to be something like he's like, I think he's kind of wrestling with how he wants to approach the Yorkins because, I, there's something like I do think that there, there is an element of violence and potential danger in him, particularly when you think of the fact that like when he gets fired um, before he sees Will's photos with the other woman and starts seeing red before that happens, he sees Jake and the mother and is rude as fuck to them and really cold and like basically treating them like they're, you know, and then, and like, and then not long and then not in around the same time, I can't remember if it's before slightly after you have like this scene where you, they show Williams watching TV and like always when there's a movie where the characters watching TV, the, the dialogue is supposed to be telling us something about the plot. Right. And it's like aliens saying like, join us or you will be obliterated. And I think he's like, I'm going to make this family fucking miserable, which is why he's like poised there with the camera waiting to watch in real to take a picture of the family collapse when she can confronts her husband for cheating and then she does it and he's all pissed off what's wrong with these people <laughs> and that really bothered him yeah. i love i love that conflict in that scene when like you expressed when nina and jake come and he yeah. he tries to just do his job i think he's afraid that if he if he um lets this uh new element come in that he's going to break down because he has the capacity to so he's fighting against it i i also think it could be interesting in the Going back to the dream sequence, like there's this chemical in that they use in film development called rotenol that is like bright red, and maybe that's like what's pouring out of his eyes. Kind of interesting. I don't know. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I think this movie's more jumbled though than we're maybe not discussing. The fact that okay, he sees the chopper book early on, the Deepak chopper book in her bag, and then he goes buys that and reads that, and then bumps into her at the mall randomly. And then he goes to visit Jake at his soccer practice, which is completely there's no one else watching the soccer practice. So, so it's even, creepy. It's so much more creepy. But the, it's like the movie was unsure. And I feel like the script writers are, are involved here in some way. Romanek. Like, hey, OK, well, then Mr. Romanek was like, we're going to have this guy do something real fucked up with this family. But we'll, we'll build it up first. And then they kind of change their mind. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me in terms of the flow of like. Suddenly he gets fired and then he gets pissed and then he doesn't want anything to do with this family. He's cold. He feels disconnected, which I guess I could understand that being a disconnect for him. But this guy is so locked into this family. You know, he put up all those pictures on that wall. That takes a ton of dedication. It wouldn't just getting fired would disconnect him. I just don't buy that. And uh, that kind of bothers me. I totally buy it. Like, I mean, like you said, 11 years of imagining himself with what he views as the perfect family and then all of a sudden one day this betrayal it turns essentially his entire life completely upside down so he but he's like that but he's like that before he finds out that 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 the husband cheated he, he's he, weird and creepy but like he's not out no of no no mind. like he he gets well yeah but he, well he get, i'm just saying we're talking about how he gets fired and then the and then Jake comes to drop off his camera that Sai gave him and he's really and, and Sai is really cold and like doesn't make eye contact with them and it's just kind of like weird to them and that's before he sees the photos of of the husband cheating that's what we're talking about right michael am i correct well i'm actually i'm just talking about the fact that he 
the order of process of this film of how he goes to the next step process. of actions. Yeah, his process <laughs> of, go, <laughs> of going through these actions. I don't think they always make sense based on the motives. And I think the script writer's like, well, we got to get him to do something, but we wanted to maybe get more radical with it. And I feel like they, they got Mark Romanek got confused. I'm sure he talked it out with somebody else. I know he wrote the script, but he probably discussed it with a friend or someone else. Like, hey, what do you think of this? And I feel like he got a little confused about what to do necessarily. It does it doesn't destroy the film, but it to me it's you know, internal motivations of why characters do the things they do in movies, it's like a big sticking point for me a lot of times, especially if we start looking at it like we are. So that's what I'm talking about. I, I don't have any issue with the the cheating part there. Or the fact that he snaps. I I, I wanna avoid this obvious cliche, but I can't because I kept thinking about it throughout the movie. Travis Bickle and Taxi Driver, like like you said, Travis, like you're with sigh up until a certain point when like he just does something just it's just it's just it's too far and and that's what's interesting with me about taxi driver is it it is a mentally unstable man but it, like he's got his own secrets and you are going to be friendly and, and up until a certain point sympathetic until they do just something completely off the charts and in travis's case I think it's when he takes Sybil to like to the porno film and you're just like, this is complete. This is wrong. Dude, what are you doing? And then you lose yeah. him. Yeah, and right. then it's from there on out. It's interesting because, oh, well, the guy is mentally disturbed. So he's going to do weird things. For me, it's the same thing with Cy Perry. <laughs> Seymour. Seymour to his friends. Well, I was, uh, I was convinced. I was absolutely, yeah, I was absolutely convinced that he was going to end up at the house for a final showdown. It was just locked in my mind from watching this decades ago. I, I was like, wait, no, wait, wait, this isn't how this movie goes. I know he comes back to the house, so there's like some reckoning. I the same between thing. Seat. I felt that, yeah, I, I was shocked that that didn't happen. And I actually give the movie credit for that, for sure. Yeah, it is kind of unconventional. And I, and I think that's why I kind of was underwhelmed initially when I watched it when I was younger, because I think I had some expectations, uh, you know, that weren't fulfilled. And I think I and I think I wanted it to kind of follow some more familiar tropes, <laughs> you know. And I think I wanted sometimes it to be, you just want that to happen. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it, it was also 19 years ago. Like, I mean, I, I you know, I don't know. I, mm -hmm. I, I but I, I I think that I just wasn't quite like uh, didn't know how didn't know what to make of a movie that that was just this ambiguous about its protagonist, who is clearly the antagonist, right? Yes, that's right. And the cops are fucking great in this movie. They don't fuck oh, around. Yeah. They get right fuck on. Greg. There's no tropes with the cops in this. I was very impressed with both Eric it, LaSalle is, is and there, Clark Gregg getting down. What is this What is this threat management unit? Is this I, actually a thing? I looked at It's funny you mentioned that because I looked into it, too, because I'm like, well, this seems like a great fucking idea. Why have I never heard of a threat management unit before? And it's very much a thing. Like, it's a normal thing in, in police departments. And I'm like, this should be in movies way more often because it seems like one of the most basic functions of police. And I've, I've never seen, fucking like, heard of it. Yeah, like every movie. single, like, creep comes around harassment movie, hand that rocks the cradle, like the gift, gift beer, like. The cops always blow them off like, yeah, well, if he calls again, let us know or some bullshit. We got a straight up huge task force here for a yeah. harassment. He's like, I no, we take this very seriously. I do start to wonder as I'm watching one hour photo, I'm like, wait, has, are they are they violating size civil rights right now by going into his home? <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't <laughs> because, get a warrant yes. that fast because he took some pictures no, of your kid. Oh, no. Yeah, I don't yeah, – because that's a – like, I mean, like, all right, so that's another moment when you lose him, which, by the way, Gary Cole fucking always plays great middle management, but he's yes. really good in this. Um, but uh, that, that <laughs> threat to his daughter, like that's such a weird, ambiguous threat. Like, I it's clearly not okay. But like, I like would the police actually go into someone's home because of it? I don't what know. What was his internal motivation for doing that? Do we know? Yeah. To scare him. Yeah. To, to scare him. You really? I don't. I guess. But it doesn't have. I don't see how it serves any purpose unless. Yeah, I guess it is to scare him. But it seems like if he has all these other plans to take these photos and fuck with. You know the well. So another Will thing Yorkin is that, and his girlfriend. That it seems like it would not be part of that situation. I just like Sai is again not a great guy. Like when he when he get when he makes sure that the that um the mother Nina is that her name when he makes sure that she sees the photos that her husband's cheating. He puts them in the fucking envelope that he knows Jake is gonna see first. Yes. Like that's fucked up. So like um, but there's he, no nudity. Well, that's wonderful. Um, no, but uh, <laughs> I do think like, I, yeah, like, like 
But how would Yoshi know that he, that he was, doesn't treat was kids a well. kid? How would Yoshi know that he was his boss's kids? Gary's cold. Has Yoshi met Gary Cole's kids many times and he's going through this role? He's like, oh, this is this is my boss's kid. It's a whole role of that. How would Yoshi know that exactly? Oh, well, well, Yoshi is also stalking Gary Cole's kid just on weekends. <laughs> so oh, he he was okay, prepared. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you for clearing that up. You're welcome. I think there there was an opportunity to maybe do something a little bit more interesting, like have Sai maybe uncover something about uh, Bill that he does not want to be uncovered. Uh, to say a little bit more about how you're never as, as, as your life is never as privatized as you can't be. But for me, like the, the picture of his kid, like I think there might be something going on where he's like trying to involve kids because his own trauma is coming back from when he was a kid and yeah. it's just, it's oblique, but there's something there. But I, in, in my opinion, like you, you could have, instead of just take this thriller angle where blah, 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 you could have unraveled it a bit more and then just have him start going after maybe more people aside from uh, Nina and with what he has to offer. Cause he's got a huge weapon uh, at, at his disposal, which is his insight into all these people's lives. It could have done a little more. Hmm. Also, is this a thing to go to flea markets and just buy photos of random people? Is that yeah, a it's a thing. People do that. Tin types, old photos. What yeah. I was wondering, Mike, is is it a thing for uh, like a basically a Walmart manager to have a secretary? What the fuck was that? She like <laughs> let Yoshi in like when Bill was ready. Yeah, and the security guards like gonna take care of business. You know, a Walmart security guard gets paid dick. Doesn't give a fuck. Definitely doesn't have a gun or any real weapon, and is just like eighty years old. He's basically the greeter, the security guard, the greeter, one of the and, same. And like Bill, like he doesn't understand why Sai is like dumping the chemicals, which he probably does every day, and yet he he is totally tuned in with these missing hundred prints. <laughs> Come on, I don't see that happening. Hundreds of prints, yeah. apparently. All of a sudden, you're like you said, that was a. Travis, you called that. That's bogus. I don't. I have a problem with that, but um, I do like. Uh, yeah, I do have more to say. I do like. Um, there is like some commentary to get to the point. One of the reasons you wanted to watch this movie, Eric, that that, that this is a very specific transitionary period in, in world history. Like, like where cameras existed on cell phones, but they were crap. Like, I remember, like, even at, like in 2006, I think I was still buying like digital cameras. Like, you know, like it was a while before like people. So, like, there was a, there was a while. There's like this, this is like the tail end of an industry of, of like film development, but there's still like this talk about how pictures just present this. Re like this, you know, um, like this reality that's not quite real. It's, it's the reality you want to document of joy and like of a perfect life and to, and to project this certain image. So he knows that even as he's obsessed with the Yorkins, which I think is uh, interesting. And, and, and like, a, you know, it's there's there is some very like time specific stuff that is of interest, I think, in this film also. Yeah, that made me think of Facebook when he was going through that narration. I'm like, that's yeah. what it is. That's what Instagram Russian, is. All these Russian right. man, it, one of our favorite yeah, words. Well, but, like, but that's how it always was too. We didn't have walls publicly to share our pictures, but this right. is what people always did. They always the photo album is the greatest hits, the good times. That's what I, never that's that. what I find interesting. Exactly is, is that we have this idea that it's just Facebook and then like the modern world that that made it like this. But maybe it's kind of always been like this. What we tend to document is usually what you know in our day-to-day -day lives is like a, a, a depiction of the best of us i mean <laughs> it's like are, are my friends always on vacation like how do they have these <laughs> awesome lives but like <laughs> added to that, like yeah added to that like you had to have the photo album and you, and you had to be sci in order to get this look into other people's life and yeah. nowadays we're all sci like we we all can just jump on anyone's wall and see what the fuck they had for dinner last night so it's it's fucking creepy it's true very very true yeah i'm glad you brought that up travis that there's a whole discussion about you know why we do our purposes for creating the memories that we do and there's more value to be taken in some of the more painful stuff but it's so challenging for some people that they choose to ignore it uh that's cool stuff that's we could do a whole show about that frankly and um we won't but we, we won't <laughs> Check part two next time. A full <laughs> commitment to that topic on One Hour Photo, the second chapter. The second uh, gentlemen, we've talked about this movie in great detail. We really have. We've covered it. In fact, we've given it more time because we cut our uh, quarantine viewing a little bit quicker this time. So we've given ample time okay. to this classic film. But is there one other thing you want to mention before we get to the final ruling here? Anybody else? Um... 
You know, there's just, I mean, there's all types of these like little moments that I could go on and on about. Like when, when Sai's just sitting in like the, the pretend house in the Save Mart, like ruminating on his life. It's like these subtle little visual motifs you have when he's looking at the mirror in the interrogation room. It's like he's looking at a photo of himself and his own isolation is just reflected back at him. Romanek does a fucking awesome job his second time out of the gate as a director. What was his first movie? Some like shit from like 1987 or something. He's been around a while. Well, I didn't see that. Yeah, I don't. Uh... All right, well, we're we gonna do the rounds. Do the lead, lead. We're I'll gonna go do go the first. rounds. Who, who's go going go. first now? I will. Hey, um, Travis Roy going first. There's this great little shot in the movie um, where towards the end, when Rob Williams is brushing his teeth. And he stops and he looks at the foam all pouring out of his mouth. And it's really heavy handed imagery. He's a rabid dog. It's pretty heavy handed. And I was talking about the Roman X use of color in this movie. And it's actually pretty heavy handed too. The, the family's always like in this burnt okra. It's all this so like warm and inviting autumn colors, you know. And then like Sai is just like in blaring white, which is not a subtle thing to do, you know. But um, but at the same time, this movie is really handled expertly. I, I, I think that I, I, I didn't know that there was a first Romanek movie. I'll have to go take a look for it. Um, I took a look to see if I could find his second movie, which I already forget the name of. It's a pretty forgettable title. Um, but uh, it was it's not streaming anywhere for, uh, that I own right now, so I have to do that at another time. But I do think that Romanek, I mean, like, he is a really talented director. I wish that he would do more. Um, I think that you've got a really interesting performance uh from robin williams here and i think it was probably easily lost in the shuffle when it came out between being like like we've talked about like some movies that weren't so great and then some movies that were sort of similar um but but going back and looking at it now i think it stands out in his career um i do disagree with the hair choices that's but that's <laughs> fine um so yeah i think that overall this is an unconventional movie and i Again, like I, I really sh- one last point, to, especially to those like that haven't watched it in a while. Like, this might kind of ruin things, but we've already talked about it. That ending sequence where you really get like things explained to you, which usually I'm like, I don't dig this kind of like late scene exposition. But um, I, it really kind of reframed the movie for me in a way that, like, as I was watching the movie, I'm like, this is this is all right, this is all right. And then it gets to that moment, I'm like, you know what? This is pretty fucking good. And I end up feeling a lot. I, I think I end up liking the movie a lot better than certainly either of my two previous viewings. Um, so I'm going to say this movie holds up. Wow. By the way, that movie's called Static, Travis. Static, Static. Yeah. 1985. Static. Right. Wow, wow. Holy shit. So this guy's been around the block, and, like, we didn't really mention that much about as, as intense as he was in the music videos. Like, he doesn't do the whole, like, Nine Inch Nails choppy editing bullshit in this. He keeps it cool and, and plays it by the, my, you know, what the script uh, directs. So. So, uh, you know, Mike, I'll just jump in there since I've been planning. Uh, trust is one of the big themes of the movie we didn't talk too much about. Like, we trust people that we tell things to to, to keep our secrets or, or at least protect them. We trust people to do their jobs like they're supposed to. So there's this whole, like, workforce dynamic in there that could be a little bit more interesting to investigate. And Sai is a cool character, man. Like, in the 90s, we had all, of, like, these weird antiheroes. And Sai does remind me a bit of defense uh from falling down but mm-hmm. he's different like defense is, is he thinks what he's doing is the right thing whereas you know sai is just doing whatever the hell he's doing and, and they're do- both completely two different characters and originally written um i, I like the picture a lot I, I think this movie's fucking awesome the, the third act it's going to take some getting used to for me it could have been a little bit more maybe interesting for me to do something a little different because that last image it's this intensely provocative image of Psy with the family and everyone's like hunky dory and they've accepted him. If you could have figured out a way to get to that and have it be the actual ending, I thought that investigation could have been made everything else a little bit more interesting. But what they've done is is enough for me. It's shot beautifully. I love all the acting. Robin Williams is off the chart. And uh, and if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. I think it holds up for sure. 
Awesome. Let me jump in real quick uh, before you go, Mike, just because there's one last point I wanted to make. It, I also thought a lot about how we used to work at Blockbuster Video, uh, Eric, and like, we had access to s everyone's addresses. Yeah. I mean, and there's so many other like pizza delivery jobs. There's so many jobs still where people have access to your address, to your home, like to information about you that like we're lucky there's not more side parishes out there, frankly. <laughs> That's a good point, man. Caught a break. Good thing society is doing a great job of taking care of everybody. Oh, thank you, society. Thanks, society. Uh, you know, this is uh, not fun to watch. I, I turned it off when I started watching. I'm like, this is really uncomfortable. Why am I doing this? This is not fun. I, I'm not enjoying myself. But it's not, even, <laughs> it's not even about enjoyment. It's like, this is awkward. And this guy, is his performance is terrifying. And the way the whole movie's set, the tenor of it, uh, puts you into situations that they want you to be in. You know, there is music in this film. We didn't really talk much about any of the music, but there's these score parts where it's like, bah, bah, uh oh, something bad's happening, or at least a bad thought's going down. And um, that's cool. I, this is an incredible performance, a really brilliant performance by Robin Williams. I can't be stated enough, in my opinion. He really deserves all the kudos for this. He makes the movie happen. I, I, saw, <laughs> I saw that. On the IMDb trivia that Jack Nicholson was offered this role, he turned it down. I'm trying to imagine Jack Nicholson in this role. Uh, about Schmidt, kind of. Right? Like yeah, about Schmidt, exactly, Travis. Yeah, yeah. but uh, apparently, you know, Robin Williams like, like shaved weird... all his body hair for this, which is an interesting point. These little details that make the character more, like, he's a very particularly organized and neat man. And he, he likes sits at home things. and watching TV in his slacks. Yeah, like, so and when he's laying on that hotel bed, the whole you know, it's like in his slacks, takes his shoes off, not on the bed. Uh, he's a very particular individual. This particular individual, um, but it's it's got some issues with how it goes and how it works, and that that did bother me. But it didn't bother me enough to not be like entranced in the final act. It got me, kept me interested. I thought some of the other stuff was a bore because. It's clearly this guy's a weirdo and they don't see it. But then again, we can't know. I mean, I guess in today's society, it's more obvious who the weirdos are. Maybe it is. Society. Maybe that's changed with our access to information. Society. society. Mm. Fucking society. Uh, this movie holds up, I guess. Yeah, that's cool. All right. yeah, it's, All right. it's solid. It's Everything, solid but Michael Green. Everything but Michael Vartan, let's be honest. Is <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. Michael, Barton. if you're listening. I'm sorry. Like, like, Why? It's just like, like, oh man, this is wooden, this wooden. Yeah, that Very early mean. scene where like they have like this domestic argument. It's like, who, who cares? Like, cut that. It's not effective <laughs> yeah, at all. Why is this guy here? Go I do ahead. like that. It drives home the point that like the perfect family is not perfect. He's neglectful. Perfect. Perfect. Well, yeah, that's what holds up. It's a solid Three holds up. Enjoy it. Hey, oh, I'm excited. I was a little Eric. worried about this one. Uh, I'm sure you were. Right. You're sweating it out all night long. All right, that's it. That's sweating it out. <laughs> Sweating to the oldies. Are we going to do Sweating to the Oldies, special edition of the Cinema 9 podcast? We're going to sweat it out. What your, uh, what your next selection is. Let's hear it. we got next week coming up. It's going to be Michael, it. Michael's Choice. Uh, the, we all wait with bated breath. Do you have it in your head, or are you going to sort it out as you speak out loud? <laughs> uh, true or false, Richard Simmons is still alive. Yeah, true, true. True. That's true. Yeah, I think that is true as well, as far as we Does know. Does he hold up? Uh, he, that's what I'm wondering. I, I'm really kind of obsessed <laughs> with it. I bet he's a uh, nice man. He seems like a sweet man. I think he's been taken advantage of. Very kind. It's very unfortunate. I could see him being exploited, and that's not. Yeah, cool. the eighties and nineties were not kind to effeminate people. They were just like fucking like sensationalized to the point of absurdity. I feel bad for the fucking guy. I want to watch that documentary. I actually never watched that. That where, where, on Richard know, Simmons. Yeah, there's because there's like a where is Richard Simmons documentary. No way. I, I, I believe there was because like he went missing for a while, and like someone literally like yeah, right. down like are like are you okay? Yeah, and then, he's like, yeah, I'm fine. Uh, I'm fine. I, I didn't know people still liked me. <laughs> this is a thing. This is definitely a thing. Turns out, you know, he's, people love him. People still. All love right, him. so we're going to do the Richard uh, Simmons classic. Um, I wish uh, a movie from. We're going to 1999. Oh, the 90s. turn of the century. Oh, very late 90s. Oh, yes, please do it, Mike. Please. Uh, <laughs> I th just an interesting movie in in the time, in the parlance of our times, and yes. how we look at movies. This show is perfect for this movie. I feel like. Let's do Kevin Smith's Dogma. Oh, 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 God. All right. All right. Oh, all shit right, demon Michael. jokes. Enter the okay, shit demon Mike. jokes. Oh, shit demon. Yeah. So <laughs> right. it's been 21 years, 22 years. We'll see how this goes. So, uh, Kevin Smith. And we haven't done Kevin Smith on the show yet. And it makes right. sense to, to, to do one. 
Sorry, right. Eric. I have no idea All where right. you think I was going with that one. But. <laughs> right. Yeah, you really had high hopes about something. He did. There's something. There's a lot of movies yes. released in 1999. It was a big year for movies. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing the Green Mile. Uh, yeah, let's do a Kevin Smith movie. Dogman's got a lot of interesting points. Uh, times have changed, but religion's still a big deal, I hear. So I think people still practice it. <laughs> they do. So let's do that. It kind of popped in my head the other day. I was like, yeah, I think that's fun. So Dogma next week. We'll do some Dogma. Right. Maybe we'll have some dogmatic talk about dogma, Christian dogma. I don't know, wow. Catholic dogma. Wow. So. wow. Is that something? Wow. <laughs> wow. That's All right, sound, that's it. That's, uh, that... <laughs> All right, well, thanks for listening, everybody. We appreciate it. <laughs> uh, no, no, is it. Yeah, we got no clever one-hour photo quotes to end the show with, so we'll just say goodbye. We don't? Uh, don't be yeah, weird. Not don't very look quotable. Don't pictures. Not yeah, very, not mind your own business, movie. you fuck. <laughs> there it is. Uh, Yoshi. <laughs> Yoshi was a good worker. Let's end it on Rest that. Power, Yoshi. Uh, Got a lot of respect for Yoshi. I was surprised by that. Yeah. It really was. 